Fort Phil Kearney's brief yet tumultuous history has embodied all the adventure, imagination, legend, and myth of the American Indian Wars. Constructed in the summer of 1866 on the east side of the Bighorn Mountains in north-central Wyoming, Fort Phil Kearney, along with its sister forts of Fort Reno and Fort C.F. Smith, was established to protect travelers along the Bozeman Trail. The War Department directed Colonel Henry Carrington to construct three forts along the Bozeman Trail to the Montana gold fields. Fort Phil Kearney was the major fort of the three and the center of conflict between the Indians, the Army, and white travelers in the region for the next two years. Carrington marched north along the Bozeman Trail with around 700 soldiers, 200 civilian teamsters and contractors, officers' wives, laundresses, and children, along with 700 beef cattle. The 200 wagons carried not only the usual supplies of ammunition, clothing, food, and tools, but doors and window frames, mowing machines, and two sawmills. The fort was a 17-acre area enclosed with an 8-foot high log wall. The wall protected the barracks, quarters for officers, laundresses, civilian employees, administrative offices, hospital, shops, and stables. While the fort was never attacked, the personnel were in constant danger. Livestock was run off, work details and travelers were under attack. Two major battles were fought near the fort. In 1866, Captain William Fetterman and 80 troops were wiped out to a man, and in 1867, about 40 soldiers and civilians successfully defended themselves from an attack of about 2,000 Sioux warriors. These battles will be covered in future videos. By 1868, the railroad had advanced far enough west that the Bozeman Trail was no longer needed. As a result of the Treaty of Fort Laramie, 1868, Fort Phil Kearney and the other forts were abandoned. Shortly after the soldiers left, Cheyenne warriors burned the fort. The site of Fort Phil Kearney and the two battlefields are maintained by the Wyoming Parks Department at the Fort Phil Kearney State Historic Site. Hi, Wyoming Traveler here, and I am at Fort Phil Kearney, Wyoming. And this is one of the most exciting of the forts to, to visit, and its history, even though it only lasted for two years, it had an exciting and very interesting two years. So let's go and take a tour of Fort Phil Kearney. We're in the museum here in uh, Fort Kearney and try to get a little look at some of the exhibits. There's a close-up of the fort as it existed. There's an excellent diorama of the fort along with a diagram of the fort's layout. So, let's go take a tour of Fort Phil Kearney. Happened to arrive uh, at a tour of the fort. So, we're just going to walk along with them and see what uh, we can discover. We'll follow the tour group now and proceed into the fort proper. Or at least what there is of the fort. We'll start the tour at the gate and move along the red arrows. There are no reconstructed buildings, but the park has outlined the location of the various structures. For defense, the fort was stockaded. One of the few forts on the western frontier that was stockaded. And then you had the platforms, 
which the soldiers would mount to shoot over the uh, stockade. Along here were the infantry barracks. This is where the bakery was located. A second hospital was built next to the bakery because it was believed that the smell from the baking bread would improve the health of the people in the hospital. Along the east wall were the band barracks, the sutler's store, and the headquarters, and the guardhouse. At the end of the street were warehouses and laundresses quarters. This is the site of the second Fort Hospital. This is the site of the post band or the regimental band. This was the site of the sutler store. And here was the regimental and post headquarters. This is the location of the guardhouse. <clears throat> The guardhouse was also a school for the kids. There were about 18 children here and 11 wives. Uh, and then going on beyond, you have warehouses, the laundresses' quarters. Along here were warehouses. Andres's quarters. Along here were warehouses. Along the south side were more barracks, stables, and the NCO quarters. South of the stable was the quartermaster's huge corral. This is the corner of the fort. You had a gun emplacement here. And then beyond this fence, of course the fence would have been a wall. But beyond it was another walled in area where the livestock was kept. The horses, Mules. And we say the area for the quartermaster's office, and then beyond is the quartermaster warehouses. From the south end of the fort, we move back to our starting point. We're proceeding down what was Officer's Row. And this was the Commander's Quarters along here. And then further on were more Officer's Quarters. Located in the southwest section of the parade ground was the fort's magazine. The day following the Fetterman fight, Colonel Carrington led 38 men to the battle site. This left the fort with a garrison of under 200 men, soldiers and civilians. Carrington surrounded the magazine with a circle of wagons as a second line of defense should the Indians attack and get over the wall. He ordered the women and children into the magazine and instructed the garrison commander to blow up the magazine if it appeared the Indians would breach the wagons. 
the Indians never did attack the fort. This ends our tour of Fort Phil Kearney. I hope you enjoyed it and have learned something more about the history of Wyoming.